So one of the things that I have um, said in previous lectures uh, is I've talked about cells, you know, like, say, macrophages or, uh, you know, uh, 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 basophils or something like that. And I say, well, like, these cells go around looking for bad guys, right? They look for a bad guy. When they find a bad guy, they eat it. Or when they find a bad guy, they, you know, raise the alarm. Or I might say, you know, this, like for interferon, it was like interferon is, is this chemical that cells release when they um, realize that they've been infected by a virus. Okay, so... You know, first off, when I say bad guy, it's, you know, we're talking about pathogens of some sort or another. Uh, not necessarily bad in the moral sense, but probably bad for you. But secondly, like, how do cells recognize bad guys? It's not like the pathogens walk around with, like, black hats that you can see. Or, um, something like that. So, and it's not like cells have eyes to begin with. So how do cells recognize things? How do cells recognize pathogens? And uh, in this lecture, that's what we're going to talk about. And it turns out that there are what are called pattern recognition receptors, or PRRs. The P can stand for pattern, but another way uh, to think about it is pathogen. recognition receptors. I like, technically we call them pattern recognition receptors because they're detecting, like, molecular patterns, but that's not really something you guys need to worry about. You can think of the PRRs as being pathogen recognition receptors because that's what they do. They recognize pathogens. All well and good. How? Let's talk about it. So there are three types of PRRs, pattern recognition or pathogen recognition detectors, and they detect what are called pathogen-associated molecular patterns, or PAMPs. I'm going to call them PAMPs from now on. Right? So these PAMPs are common things that you find on a lot of pathogens. Right? This isn't the same as an antibody. Like an antibody recognizes something very specific. An antibody might recognize this one protein which is found on the surface of the Staph aureus bacteria and that's it. Right? Uh, so so antibodies are super specific. These are much more general. So these PAMPs are things that are found on a lot of pathogens. For example, capsule uh, 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 polysaccharides, right? Capsules are a thing that's found on bacteria. And they're not found on your cells. Your cells don't make capsules. So uh, if you have something that recognizes capsules, you are recognizing a thing that is associated with a pathogen. So in this case, capsules would be the PAMP, and the thing that detects capsules would be the PRR. Another example might be, well, let's just go down here and take a look. Lipopolysaccharide, 
right? Lipopolysaccharide is found on gram-negative bacteria, not found on any of your cells. If you see some lipopolysaccharide floating around on something in your body, like in your blood, it's probably a bad guy, and you should eat it. Peptidoglycan. Again, found on bacteria, not found on any of your cells. If you see some peptidoglycan, probably in a bad guy. Lipotechoic acid. And lipoproteins. Flagellin. And viral RNA. Right? So bacterial flagella are very different, very recognizable. Um, viral RNA, uh, I'll talk about in just a little bit, but uh, probably the most common thing that you're looking for there is double-stranded RNA. All of your RNA should be single-stranded, but viruses often have double-stranded RNA. So like if you see double-stranded RNA, that's a good sign that it's associated with a virus. Uh, so PAMPs or pathogen associated molecular particles are, or molecular patterns are sometimes called MAMPs for microbe associated because you know they might be on a microbe that's not a pathogen but honestly like if you find a microbe inside of your body you should kill it. And um, there's like a second class that overlaps a lot with it which are called danger associated molecular patterns or damps um, these are often things that you make that for instance are supposed to be kept inside of cells and if you find them outside of cells that means something done killed the cell all right if you've got this like Molecule, let's call it tissue factor because it's one that I know of. Uh, and tissue factor is normally inside cells, and you are like a cell floating around and you bind some tissue factor just floating around out there. That means there was a cell whose insides are no longer inside, so it died. And if you find a whole bunch of it, it means there was probably a whole bunch of cells that just died. And like that could be because there's a bacteria killing them. It could be because there's a virus infecting them. Or it could be because somebody just stabbed you with a knife and a bunch of cells died. But, I mean, like, if somebody stabbed you with a knife, you have a good chance of getting infected. So if you find these damps, like, they aren't direct signs of a pathogen. You're not actually detecting the pathogen. But you are detecting something that says hey there might be a pathogen around you should be careful so PRRs detect pants and MAMPs. Not really going to focus on MAMPs. There are three types of PRRs that detect different things in different places. The first one that I want you to know about are called toll-like receptors. Let's actually switch to red. So toll-like receptors, or TLRs. These are found on the surface of some cells. So they are found on the surface and they point outside of the cell. So this is a way that the cell detects something in its outside environment, not something inside the cell. Toll-like receptors uh, detect PAMPs, right? Um, most commonly bacterial, but it could be viral, right? 
So they detect stuff that is associated with pathogens outside of the cell. So like some common ones are detecting LPS or lipoproteins or flagellin. They can also be pointed inside a compartment, uh, a phagosome, which contains things that you have just eaten. Uh, so, for instance, if you eat something and break it up and digest it, then now you can sort of detect the things that are inside that cell. So, like double-stranded RNA, if you eat a virus, you might be able to see some double-stranded RNA. Um, bacterial DNA, viral DNA, things like that. So they can also detect stuff that you ate. But if you ate it, it probably came from outside of you. Not all or even most cells have toll-like receptors. The things that have toll-like receptors are called sentinel cells. That's an important term. Um, sentinel cells are things that are always vigilant, always watching. This would include monocytes, macrophages, dendritic cells, okay, so these are the, remember what they're called? These are the uh, antigen presenting cells. Uh, sentinel cells also include basophils and mast cells. So remember I said that these antigen presenting cells are like always vigilant. They're always like moving around looking for bad guys. These are your cops and your border guards, right? Um, well, how is it that they, that they detect bad guys? Toll-like receptors. Similarly, basophils and mast cells, these are your scouts, right? And they're also always looking for bad guys, except when they find a bad guy, they don't like eat it, they instead raise the alarm by secreting histamine, which is a cytokine that raises the inflammatory response. Again, how do they detect bad guys? How do they know when it's time to raise the alarm? Toll-like receptors. If they bind some, you know, lipopolysaccharide, they know, hey, there's gram-negative bacteria in here. That's a problem. I should raise the alarm. Um, so only certain cells called sentinel cells have TLRs. TLRs, crucially, detect in the extracellular environment. Second category of pattern recognition receptors are called nod-like receptors, or NLRs. These are found in the cytoplasm, and they detect things inside the cell. Specifically, they detect bacterial things. They detect, uh, you know, bacterial components like flagellin or peptidoglycan or perhaps, um, you know, uh, bacterial DNA or something like that. But they are detecting it inside the cell. Uh, and what they are defending against is some bacteria hide out inside cells. 
Uh, so, um, tularemia and chlamydia fall into this category. They invade your immune system by getting inside your cells and hiding out in there where your immune system has a hard time finding. So, um, most cells in your body have these nod-like receptors. And if they detect bacterial activity inside of the cell, uh, then they will release cytokines um, and actually they will usually undergo apoptosis they'll kill themselves in response to the fact that they've been invaded um, they also uh, secrete substances that activate the inflammatory response because I mean even though they're killing themselves you got to warn the rest of the body that there's an invasion going on The third category are what are called rig-like receptors, or RLRs. These are again found in the cytoplasm of cells, but they detect viral components. Specifically, they detect viral RNA. Um, and uh, they look for, like, double-stranded RNA or RNA that isn't capped properly. There are also, like, some signs that RNA comes from viruses rather than something else. And they detect that. And um, they, if they detect, hey, I've been infected by a virus because I have my RLRs and they just told me that they saw some viral RNA, what are you going to do? Well, what's the cytokine that you produce in response to a viral infection to help you fight off a viral infection? So, interferons. Like, there's a bunch of things that RLRs can do, but like the primary thing that they do is they lead to the cell producing interferons. Um, and they will also usually cause the cell to undergo apoptosis. The cell's gonna kill itself off. Well, it's gonna try to kill itself off before the virus takes it over. And it's not like viruses are pushovers, right? This is the way your body wants to work. If, if, if everything worked properly, you would never get sick. So like viruses have their own tricks. They turn off a cell's ability to kill itself. They sometimes, you know, can get around, interfere on, and things like that. But uh, this is one of your main viral defense systems is cells. And this is most cells in your body have these RLRs, detect when they get infected by a viral, by viral RNA, and that causes them to undergo apoptosis and to secrete interferons. Uh, so in conclusion, right? Um, PRRs detect PAMPs and DAMPs. Right, there's three types of them. Toll-like receptors are found on sentinel cells, and they detect things external, extracellular, in nature. Um, Nod-like receptors detect, are in most cells. They detect things internal, and specifically they detect bacterial things. Rig-like receptors are also found in most cells, uh, and uh, they specifically detect viral things inside a cell and result in the production of interferon.